Have you ever been to the airport and seen a bunch of pilots and flight attendants lugging those black bags behind them and wondered what on earth are they carrying in those things? Well, today I'm gonna to show you. So you may be saying to yourself, there are so many videos on YouTube which talk about what you should bring as a pilot or a flight attendant. What makes you so different? I'm gonna give you three reasons. One, I'm gonna show you specifically how to pack the bag as opposed to just what I simply bring. Number two, I am what you call in this community a commuter, meaning that I go from one city to another to start my day. And then three, I'm gonna show you how to pack food when you travel. So here's my basic setup. I carry two bags with me a roller bag and a cockpit or flight bag as well. Because there are two bags, we're gonna present all of this to you in two separate videos. The first bag we're gonna look at is my cockpit bag or my flight bag, which is the one that goes in the cockpit with me. I have the Aerocoast Pro EFB and Cooler 2 bag. It is a solid design, plenty of pockets with good durable zippers and a solid carrying handle. More importantly, I can put all of this into it. And now I want to show you what I bring and how I specifically fit it into this bag. Starting with the front of the bag on the outside pocket, I put these seatbelt covers in there. For some reason on the CRJ 200, 700, and 900, you can develop these annoying black marks on your shoulder on your white shirt. And so I just put these on when I fly to prevent those black marks from getting there. They fit pretty snugly right in the front pocket. Next, I put a pair of sunglasses in a case in the front pocket as well. Nothing special, just a pair of Ray-Bans I purchased like six years ago. In the pocket just behind the front pocket, I packed these awesome things called Kinder Fluff visors. And I'll put a link to those things and everything else in the description below. These things pop open and stick to the windows and provide shade from the sun up at altitude. It's like it makes your own little like sun fort in the cockpit. It's very nice. Moving on to the side of the bag where you would put your identification tag. That's where I keep all of my identification stuff. I got this little pouch on Amazon so I can easily consolidate my passport, medical certificate, and pilot license into one place. This is key if you commute. Anytime you want to ride in the jump seat up in the cockpit, you have to present all this information to the captain in order to be allowed to do so. I found that if you keep all that information consolidated in one place, it just creates a one-stop shop for you to be able to present all that without having to dig through all your bag and search for it. I also don't like flying with my wallet or keys in my pocket, so those items go in there as well. Rotating the bag to the back, in the larger pocket, I place my 13-inch MacBook Pro. It fits perfectly. My work iPad in the case, and then my paper logbook. A lot of you will ask, why do you still carry a paper logbook in this digital world? I don't know. The only comment I can say to that is, during my time in the military, we had an electronic logbook, and it like shorted me 300 hours. But luckily, I kept track of all my flight hours on a paper copy, and I was able to present that later to get those hours back. Plus, I just like flipping paper, man. It's just nice. Moving on to the next side, I place extra pins in that little side pocket and then slide my computer charger in there as well. That brings us to the top pocket. Unclip the carrying handle and voila. First thing is this company issued charger, a computer hard drive complete with cord, a GoPro, and this thing. What is this, you ask? These are my charging cords an Apple Watch charger, two lightning USB chargers, micro USB charger, and all of the wall adapters. When you travel, you are constantly setting up many charging stations in the hotels, and it pays to be organized. I do a daisy chain technique on all of my charging cables. This lets you release them without any tangling. I am so amazed at all of the pilots and flight attendants that I fly with. It will just pull out like this massive like mess of cords that are all tangled up. I mean, it just pays to be a little more organized. All of this fits snugly into the pouch with all the wall adapters, and that fits nicely into the top. Next, I keep a small but very powerful flashlight with extra batteries in the netted pocket. And that finishes up the top pocket. Next, you have this little pocket here. I keep hearing protection for when I'm outside, chapstick, a set of Apple AirPods, and these old Apple headphones. Now, I know people are gonna ask, why do you bring AirPods and the old school Apple headphones? Well, there's a couple reasons. Number one, I have found that anytime I'm doing any kind of editing on my computer and I have my phone out, my AirPods will randomly switch back and forth between the two and it's just super annoying. So what I've decided is AirPods for the phone and then I just plug my cord into the side of the laptop anytime I wanna edit or you know watch a movie or something like that. Secondly, a little pro tip, a lot of airlines like this American Airlines Airbus still use an aux hookup if you wanna actually watch a movie on the plane during your commute. So I just keep that readily accessible so I don't have to ask for a set of headphones if I wanna watch a movie. Okay, I'm an 
interrupt right here and talk about something real quick. I didn't want to mention headsets in this episode, but I think it's appropriate to talk a little bit more about ear gear. As I mentioned earlier, I bring the old school Apple headphones, AirPods, and then I use the Bose A20 headset. There is a very simple and cost-effective way of combining all three of these, and I've seen two pilots do it, and that's to buy the QC35 Bose headset, and then you use this company called Avi, and they sell individual microphones that hook into the Bose headset. Effectively, what you have now is you can use the aux hookup, you have Bluetooth capability, and you can hook into the aircraft. So the other thing about this method is the cost. When I purchased the Bose A20s, I got them at a discount and they were $950. You can pick up the Bose QuietComfort or QC35 headphones for about $300, and then the Avi microphone is gonna cost you about $270 which all said and done, it's gonna be about $600. So obviously it is a cheaper option, it's less bulky than the Bose A20s, and it combines that aux hookup, Bluetooth, and the ability to hook into the aircraft all in one, which is awesome. Okay, enough on that, we'll get back to the regular program. Lastly, let's look at the cooler space. In terms of packing food for a trip, let's look at two things. First is meal planning. Most of my trips are four days, and I'm trying to lose weight, so I do the fasting diet, meaning I don't typically eat breakfast. That leaves lunch and dinner for four days, equaling eight meals. If my trip ends relatively early on the fourth day, say before 3 p.m., I won't pack dinner for that day. And typically, most captains like to go out to eat at least one night with the crew, which I think is really cool, so I try to keep one day open during the four-day trip where I can go eat out. Secondly, I pack healthy, somewhat simple meals Meals that I don't mind eating cold. That is a downside to a busy workday traveling. Sometimes you have to eat on the go, so packing meals you can eat in the cockpit really helps. Grilled chicken, baked vegetables, etc. that's all good stuff to pack. And when you get to a microwave in a hotel or an airport, then obviously heat up the meals. I don't want to spend a lot of time on meal prep, so I'll just include a document in the link below that has a bunch of recipes for a bunch of the food that I take with me on the road. I use these airtight containers to store the big meals in. They fit perfectly in the cooler. I also have these little side dishes that I use as well, and they stack perfectly also. I found that three ice packs will keep your food cold all day. This leaves room for packs of instant rice as well as some snacks, and I seal that up nice and tight. Lastly, on the bottom, there's this little pocket, and I've been trying to read more, so I pack a book in the bottom pocket. Again, you might ask, why don't you just download digital books and put them on your iPad so you can save room and weight and all that stuff. A couple reasons. Number one, that costs money. And two, I have a bunch of books at home that I've been meaning to get through, some like for years, and so I'm trying to knock those out and read more while I fly. Not specifically while I fly the airplane, but while I'm out on the road. Yes. And that's it. That is my cockpit bag. It fits perfectly in the compartment next to my seat when I fly, and I have no issues fitting it under the seat of this E-170 or under the seat of the 717 when I commute. I did have a little trouble trying to get it under this uh, Airbus 320, but it did eventually fit. I do want to talk about a couple of negatives to this bag, and the first one is the anchor points for your shoulder strap. They're made out of plastic. Mine broke within like the first month of owning the bag, so I had to slide this little carabiner in there as a quick fix, and honestly, I have, I have made no effort to try to fix it beyond that. I don't use the shoulder strap, so it honestly doesn't bother me at all. Secondly, this bag gets pretty heavy, and when it's fully loaded, it is off-centered and will not sit up straight on its own. This is particularly annoying if you didn't seal all your food tight enough, because sometimes that stuff will spill inside the cooler, and it's a mess to clean up. The simple solution is just make sure when you set it down that you're always leaning it up against something and you won't have a problem. The price is a little steep, but I do think the bag is overall worth it. I'm always surprised at how much I can cram in there. And honestly, I, I think it'll last me like a good five to 10 years. So I think it's worth paying the 130 to $140 or whatever for this particular bag. All right, that's it for part one. For part two, we're gonna talk about my roller bag. I like mine. I've definitely got some pros, definitely got some cons, but We'll talk about that later. See you next time.